Alright YouTube, welcome back to this series on Greylog. In this video, we're going to be looking at message enrichment. We already kind of started this process in my last video on pipeline extractors. We took the original message and extracted key value pairs out of it. Now some might argue, did you really enrich that message? After all, we knew the username and client IP just by looking at the message. Sure, you made analytics easier, but we really didn't gain any additional knowledge about this one message. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can insert new data from different sources into this message, increasing our knowledge about this one message. I'm going to show you three different ways of doing this. We're going to look at static fields, where we insert a key value pair that never changes. We're going to do a CSV lookup, where we place a CSV file on the grade log server and then do a lookup for a key value pair. And then finally, we're going to do an HTTP JSON path or an API call to an external service where we will receive multiple key value pairs and then insert one or more into the message. Okay, so let's start with the easiest one here, static fields. We are going to use pipeline rules for static fields, but you should be aware that you can set static fields on the input also. If we click on system and inputs and find an input you want to add a static field to, you can click the more actions and we have a add static field option. I tend not to use this because this will apply a static field to all messages on an input. I usually only want to apply static fields to certain messages on this input, so to accomplish that we need to use pipelines. So if we go back to our authentication message, we did this extractor work on this message to get the username and client IP, but now I want to classify this message further. I want to standardize a new key value pair that I will add to every authentication message across all my surfaces and devices sending logs into Greylog. That way I can easily search for this new key value pair to view only the messages I care about. So if we think about authentication messages, we generally have three ways of classifying them. Login, logout, and failed. And if you have more, that's fine, because we are going to set a single key for all of them. That will be auth underscore status. And depending on what type of authentication message this is, we will change the value. So that pretty much covers what we want to accomplish. Let's jump into Greylog and make this work. First, we need to find the pipeline rule that does my extracting for this login message. We need to add another action to this rule to assign a static field. We will select the set field action. For the field, I'll type auth status. And because this is a login message, for the value, I'll type login. I want to note, in my last video, I said the rule simulator was kind of broken, and that might have been because I wasn't escaping special characters correctly, but I discovered if you just find the message you're working on and click copy message, this will copy the entire message in JSON format. If we paste this into the simulator, it does seem to work fine. Plus, you have the benefit of seeing the entire message and what's going on, so this is what I would recommend you do going forward. So we can see here that we are matching on this condition, extracting key value pairs, and also inserting a new key value pair of auth underscore status and login. Okay, so for the next two examples here, we're going to be using lookup tables. As the name suggests, lookup tables allow us to look up information. We can give the lookup table a key and receive a value in return. If this is the first time we are requesting this key, the lookup table will ask the data adapter directly for this value. Once we have the value, we will store the key value pair in cache and return the result to the pipeline rule requesting it. The next request for this same key will be handled by the in-memory cache until the cache times out. Generally speaking, I'll build a lookup table, cache, and data adapter for each source of information I'm dealing with. The first data adapter we want to look at is the CSV data adapter. This data adapter will look up key value pairs from CSV files located on the Greylog server. So for this example, I have an IPFIX flow message. My firewall can export IPFIX messages and I can input these messages into Greylog to get a better understanding of the traffic flowing across my firewall. I've done the extractor work on these IPFIX message and I have extracted a protocol identifier field. This field has a value of 6. Now, the value of 6 really doesn't tell me much. I need to do a lookup of what 6 is by going over to the IANA website. If I scroll down this list on protocols, we see that 6 is TCP traffic. Okay, so I know this IP fix message is TCP, but I don't really want to have to look that up every time. I want this done automatically, so I can create a new field in my message called protocol name that will actually have the name of the protocol. Now, protocols really don't change much, if at all, and they conveniently linked a CSV file on the website, so all signs are pointing to the CSV data adapter as being a good choice for this lookup. So to start, we need to download the CSV file to our Greylog server. We'll jump in the shell here and wget this file from the website. We also want to note the file name and the directory where we save this file to. Okay, let's go back to the web GUI and build our CSV data adapter. 
We can configure our lookup table caches and data adapters by going to System and Lookup Tables. We will start by clicking the Data Adapter tab and clicking Create Data Adapter. I will select the CSV file data adapter from the drop-down list. We need to give it a title, name, and the file path where the CSV file is stored. This check interval is to check if the CSV file has any updates, as Graylog actually loads CSV files into memory when it first reads them. So this is just how often we check if the CSV file on the disk has any updates. We can also adjust the separator and quote character if needed. Now these last two are important. Here you are mapping what column header is the key and what column header is the value. So we'll use decimal for the key and keyword for the value. Okay, so the next step is to create a cache to go along with this. As I said before, CSV files are read into memory, so I'm not sure having a cache for a CSV file is going to do much. But we have two options, cache and do not cache. I must assign a cache to a lookup table, so if you don't want to do any caching, just create a do not cache cache. Okay, and finally we can build the lookup table where we connect everything together. We can enter a title, name, and connect our data adapter and cache we built. We can test our lookup table by supplying a key here and seeing what the lookup table will return. Okay, perfect. We are sending a key of six and getting TCP as a value in return. Okay, so the last step in using this lookup table is creating a pipeline rule that uses it. The good news is we have a single pipeline rule action that can do everything for us. This is the extract lookup value action. First, this action asks the message for a value. In this case, we're asking for the protocol identifier value from the message. We will then enter the lookup table we want to pass this value to as a key. And finally, we will pass the result of the lookup table to a new field called protocol name. Okay, let's jump in the web GUI and actually build this pipeline rule. First, I'm going to copy a sample IP fix flow message into the simulator. For our condition, we simply want to check if the field we want to look up is present. So we will select the has field condition and enter the field we want to look up, in this case, protocol identifier. Now let's add our extract lookup value action. For the field, we'll type in protocol identifier. For the lookup table is the name of the lookup table. And for the new field, we'll type in protocol name. If we add this action and look at our simulator now, we have a working lookup table. As the condition is matching to true, we are extracting TCP, and we are creating a new field called protocol name with the value. Now I can hit save and assign this pipeline rule to my pipelines for processing. Okay, in the last example, we're going to use the HTTP JSON path data adapter to make an API call to get multiple values. I will then select one or more values and insert them into the message. I'm going to be using the LibreNMS API for this. This is a open source network management system that allows us to monitor the network. I have a whole video series on that if you're interested. In my environment, LibreNMS holds a lot of information about the devices that are sending logs into Graylog. So it'd be really cool if when I receive the logs from these devices, I use a lookup table to do an API call to LibreNMS to get more information about the device that is sending in the log. I can then insert this additional information into the message, enriching them further. Now, Graylog supports APIs that return JSON, so if your API is not returning JSON, well, this isn't going to work. But if it is, then this is a really cool data adapter. Remember what I said about lookup tables. We are giving the lookup table a key and expect a value in return. So as long as we're giving an IP address as a key, it will pass that IP address or key to the data adapter, and then the data adapter will insert it into the end of the URL. As long as we set our HTTP headers correctly with the XAuth token for authentication into the API, we should get JSON data back in return. This single value and multi-value JSON path is you picking and choosing what data from the API response you actually want to present to the lookup table as a response. For the single value response, I will respond with the sysname, and for the multi-value response, I will respond with the device information. I have this square bracket zero in the JSON path because when LibreNest responds, it has the device information inside an array. I only expect one object in this array, so I need to tell Graylog to look at the first object in the array and not the array itself. Okay, we have an idea of what we want to accomplish. Let's go ahead and build our data adapter, cache, and lookup table.
Okay, the lookup table appears to be working great and we are receiving a single and multi-value response. Now we can build our pipeline rule that will do the lookup and insert this data into the message. Okay, there's a lot going on here, but it's really not that bad once you break it down. The first thing we're doing is getting the IP address of the device sending the message. We can do this by using the GL2 remote IP field. We store this IP address as a variable and output it to the next action in the pipeline rule. In the next step, we are giving the lookup table the IP address as the key and getting a multi-value response in return. We store this response as a variable and pass it to the next action. This variable with multiple key value pairs is called a map. In the next step, we give the map a key and get a single value for a response. We set this response to a variable and pass it to the next step. And in the last step, we take the variable and set it to a new key value pair in the message. I should note, if you wanted to set all the key value pairs returned by this lookup table, you could save one action here by inserting the set fields action. This will set all the key value pairs returned by the lookup table. Okay, so let's build our pipeline rule. First, I'm going to copy and paste a sample message into the simulator. For our win clause, I would typically check if the value I wanted to use in the pipeline rule is present. But we can't do that here because I want to use GL2 remote IP and that is present in all messages. So I'm going to leave it blank and this will insert a true statement that matches all my messages. If you did need to segment this further, I would still leave this as true, but then I would create a stream that only has messages that would work with the API. That way you could still use this GL2 remote IP field. Okay, let's start adding some actions. Our first action will be the get field value. We will enter GL2 remote IP for the field. This will tell us the IP address of the source that sent this message. If we add this and scroll down, we see that our first action is outputting a variable with the IP address of 192.168.1.1. Next, we add the lookup multi-value action. Let's use the LibreNMS devices lookup table that we created earlier, and the key we are going to send will be the output from step one. If we scroll down, we can see again that we are receiving JSON from this step and outputting it as a variable. Next up is the get value for key in map action. The map we are going to use will be the output from step two, and the key is what we want to look up. In this case, will be version. Again, we can see we are outputting the version number as a variable from this step. And finally, we need to write this value to the message. We do that with the set field action. The field we want to set is software version, and the value is going to be the output from step three. Okay, we click add, and if we look at our simulator, we are making an API call and inserting the software version number. We can now create this rule and use it in pipelines for message processing. So that's all I have for this video. Obviously, there's many more ways of adding data to messages, but most of them are going to be doing similar things to this, getting a value from the original message, looking it up, and then inserting the new data into the message. So hopefully this gives you some ideas of how you can enhance your messages in Greylog. As always, thank you again for watching. Please like and subscribe.